Um, I'm curious, how many of you who, even though you've been in the field for a long time, you still get really nervous with your presentation? Uh, um, sometimes I really obsess about doing a program. This is one of them, especially the opening, because that's always really important. And so, as I was preparing and obsessing about the opening and this presentation, I found myself reflecting on an experience I had this spring about another opening and another presentation that I obsessed about. And here's what the situation was. Think about in the last year if you've spoken to a group where you were concerned that the audience wouldn't be receptive to your ideas, that maybe they were forced to go to training, or for some other reason you think it's going to be a tough group. I wasn't thinking about that with people. <laughs> but with this group, that's how I was, what I was anticipating, because the presentation was at a conference where my session was at seven in the morning. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. I, I've been, you know, speaking at conferences and going to conferences for years, and when I got the letter, I'm like, you gotta be kidding, seven in the morning? You know, are they gonna be awake? I'm thinking, you know, picturing them rolling out of bed, you know, coming to class with their jammies and bunny slippers on, you know? So I'm thinking, the typical way that I start off this presentation, it was on onboarding, you know, how you start new employees off, an organization, the typical way I start this off isn't going to be enough for this seven o'clock group. So how am I going to start it off? So right up until the last minute, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. And I'm feeling nervous. Well, my nervousness level ratchets up higher when I walk into the conference center and into my room. And it's a huge hall, room for about five or 600 people. And you know, I set up. 20 minutes of, there's like a dozen people in the room. <laughs> like, Hello! <laughs> you know, so I'm just picturing this totally awkward, low energy um, vibe. So, so my anxiety is getting higher and higher. And then I'm also aware of my energy is low. Even though I've gotten up really early, worked out, slugged down a cup of coffee, I was feeling flat. So I ran out of the room, found the Starbucks in the conference center, Slug down three shots of espresso, <laughs> get some rocket fuel going. I run back up, now it's five of. So talk about cutting it close and the volunteers, I think we're about to send out an APB on me, they're getting a little worried. And as I walk in, the place is wall to wall, totally filled up, people standing room only. I'm like, okay, a different kind of pressure. So as I walk on, this is the story that I started off with. Now, since this is a program on storytelling, I'd like you to hear it both as simply a listener, but also with your trainer speaker lens to look at and listen, why did I tell this story? <coughs> what do you notice about the story? So I said to the group how, as I was, similar to what I shared with you, as I was preparing for this talk, I found myself having sort of like a speaker flashback to one of the most bizarre experiences I've ever had as a speaker. And what happened was, it was the first time I'd ever been invited to do a keynote at a conference. And even though I'd done a lot of conference presentations, never done a keynote before, and I started stressing out about it. You know, it's a, a theme here. And so, <laughs> and you think about it, sometimes in your career, when you have the opportunity to ratchet it up a level, a whole, a whole new level, sometimes, we convince ourselves we can't do it. Because if you've ever done a keynote, it's a different skill set than just doing training. So I'm like, oh my God, am I gonna be able to do this? Plus I had a whole bunch of research that I wanted to share with the audience that was new, and I, I wasn't able to think of how to put it together and explain it in a coherent way. So I'm thinking, I really wanna share this, but I'm not gonna be able to do it in time. So two weeks of stressing myself out over working with this. That, combined with the fact that spending 14 hours in the air from LA to Sydney, sitting right next to Typhoid Mary. Have you ever had that pleasant flying experience? Like, achoo, 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 like all over you? Between stressing myself out and her sneezing and coughing on me, by the time I arrived in Australia, I had this major cold. I had her cold. And here's the deal. You know, I was all stuffed up, nose running and everything, but I didn't want to take any cold medicine because the last time I had a cold and had to do a program, the cold medicine shut my brain down. And I'll never forget this. I remember saying to the group with this like tremendous amount of import, 
it's important to remember it's like nothing. Absolutely nothing. The hard drive crashed. So I didn't want that to happen. So no, no cold medicine. But now he found like this. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, they're gonna have to listen to me in this for the next 90 minutes. So I'm feeling really embarrassed and sad for them. And as I walk out onto stage, that anxiety though about how I'm going to sound disappeared because it was replaced by a more pressing anxiety, which was, remember, no cold medicine? My nose was starting to run, and I had forgotten clean <laughs> And obviously, it's not an option. So sure enough, five minutes into the presentation, the faucets are turned on. I need to do something here. So I figure, this is a good chance for people to break up into small groups and discuss anything. I don't really care at this point. So I come up with a, a somewhat relevant topic. And I run off, look for a bathroom, find the bathroom, blow my nose, blow my nose, blow my nose, blow my nose. I can breathe again, stuff my pockets with, with um, Kleenex. I'm ready to go back in. I wouldn't have been so ready to go back in if I had realized the whole time I was blowing my nose, my wireless mic was off. <laughs> now remember, I don't know this is going on. Well, it was taped. When I got back from the trip and I played the tape to see if it really sounded that bad, it did. When I got to the park, I'm like, oh my god, it sounds like it just went on forever. Like, oh, 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 oh. And the image that I got was this flock of monster geese. <laughs> and so as I walk back on the stage, I'm like, oh, I am back. And I get this major round of applause. <laughs> and I've heard that Australians had a droll sense of humor, so I just you know, wrote it off Australians. So somebody blurts out, hey, did you know your mic was on? <laughs> Of course, I'm thinking, did I just blow my nose? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, that was the case. So I think that's the most bizarre experience I've ever had as a trainer. So I shared that with the group, and I mentioned to the group that if you see me walk out with a mic on, please tackle me. <laughs> okay, stop before I do that again. Okay, I'm going to stop. Here's what I want to ask you to do. At your groups, three or four minutes to share what your observations were. Why did I share that particular story? And what did you notice, anything about the telling of the story? Okay? So three or four minutes, and then we'll come back together as a group.